Hi, this is LJ Bothell, and I wanted to make a quick video for you to properly uh, welcome you to my courses for spring quarter 2023 at Shoreline Community College. It's already starting to be an interesting and maybe confusing quarter for you, as well as a lot of faculty and staff at the college. And I wanted to bring that um, to your attention and share with you some information you may need to know um, to help you feel more comfortable with how the quarter is starting and what to expect from me in the courses you're taking with me. This quarter I'm teaching business technology uh, or BizTech 105 computer applications and BizTech 150 Microsoft Excel. So to start, you've probably been seeing messages and getting all sorts of alerts and information from your instructors about a soft start for this quarter. And what has happened is that during the last week of winter quarter, during finals week, Shoreline Community College was hit with a ransomware attack. And there's um, information already being provided to you um, and to everyone on a student support center website, which I'll have a link to on our Canvas homepage. But essentially what happened is that it affected the college's website, which has a lot of our information and some of our resources for students and probably some resources for specific classes and programs for students. And as a result, the uh, faculty, the staff, the tech departments have been working overtime for the last couple, two and a half weeks now to try to get everything in as much order as we can for you to help make sure that your enrollment and registration is fine, that you can start your classes on time, that all possible information you need to have a successful and great quarter is there. But it's taking us a little more time than it does at the average uh, beginning of the average quarter. So anyway, um, one of the big things you noticed early this week is that if you are already a previous student and you use Canvas for your course management, you're getting the opportunity now to log into Canvas through CTC link using your student ID and password instead of just having to use the um, student email and password that you had previously. And this was decided to help streamline things for students that are new and existing students uh, who to have an easier way to get logged in where they didn't have to worry about knowing their student uh, assigned email with the college and to not have any issues with that. Um, second, you'll notice that if you try to get to the college website, most of the pages are down. And as a result, instructors like me who relied on putting a lot of links in our Canvas for you um, will find that some of those links are broken and we're trying to go through and make sure to clean up our information for you as quickly as possible so you have a minimum or amount of or no uh, broken links. But if you're seeing that happening in your classes, like in my two classes in Canvas or your other instructors, that's what's happening. It's not an intent to have sloppy work. It's trying to keep up on all the changes that need to be made and figure out what is and what isn't working. So everyone is, really appreciates your uh, patience while we're going through this. Now, despite this ransomware attack, Canvas itself was not affected. That's safe. All the stuff that we're used to working with on there um, is still fine, is still available. You'll be able to come in, get your course information, be able to upload your assignments as each instructor needs, as I need for my two courses. Um, in um, also CTC link where you register, enroll, and look at your schedule and other things there, that is also unaffected by the ransomware attack. So most of that information that uh, everyone needs is still just fine and still in the same format. But one thing you'll know is if you go into CTC link to look up your general student information, on the left-hand side of the navigation, there's also a new uh, button there for um, uh, Canvas, as well as being able to just log in directly to uh, uh, Canvas through CTC link. So what are the status of BizTech 150 and 105? At first, I'm already seeing activity by students. I've seen people who are interested. I've seen people who are sending me emails 
thank you. I am so glad that you are with me and that you're taking these classes. I'm really excited to be working with you this quarter. What you may notice, since most of you may have never worked with me before, is that in my courses, only the first two or three modules and the information module are published, and then other modules haven't been published yet. And because of changes that need to be made, those modules are opening a little more slowly than I usually have them. By the end of the second week of the quarter, all of the modules in the classes um, will be open, and they'll be opening every couple of days, as you, you'll see. All of a sudden, week four and week five and week six will open up. Why is this happening? This kind of goes into uh, some information about the textbooks. Now, I was very lucky to inherit BizTech 105 computer applications, and this is my first quarter getting to teach that here at Shoreline Community College. I taught something similar at Seattle Central a while back, but bringing it over here and making sure the information is updated, um, current with current technology and digital uh, needs and internet information um, and issues it, uh, was, was really fun. But the books that were previously being used didn't cover any of that. And I didn't want to use the previous books from the previous instructor, which were probably pretty pricey. Instead, what I did is I created a textbook of open educational resources, which means the textbook is free to you. And then with the BizTech 150 course, the Excel course, up through winter quarter, I was using publisher textbooks that I inherited when I took over the class about three, three and a half years ago. And the same thing, the books are expensive. They were good books and they had good digital tools. But one, the books were expensive. Two, students didn't know what to do with the books when the quarter was over. And three, the publisher of those books actually went through a lot of changes and became unreliable in their communications and support. So it turned out winter quarter, I spent most of the quarter writing new textbooks. Now the new textbooks are fairly generalized, meant to give you good information, but not a lot of current links or current resources because they'll need to be edited and um, updated every quarter. What they do is they give you lessons, activities, questions, things to look at, and they should be fairly robust with all the stuff that we normally cover during these classes during the quarter. Now, with the books, I was able to, after writing them, get a PDF of them up in the first day of the quarter. Just this morning, I was able to finally get the Pressbooks version. Pressbooks is a, a dynamic online textbook experience where you can go in and access the table of contents and go from one chapter to the next, one page to the next more easily. It's more visually appealing, and it also should respond well with screen readers as needed. And in the uh, textbook, you should be able to also download alternate versions, as is described in the uh, introduction of the textbook of the different ways you can access it. But that's where the textbook is now. For each of the classes, the textbook is available. It's in Pressbooks. And it will also allow me to make edits and changes during the quarter as I discover interesting issues. Because as hard as I worked, as much as I tried to edit, you as the students are going to find all sorts of probably little faux pas or have questions that will help me clarify and tighten them. I'm really sorry that you're getting to do this. No one wants to be that student. But this being the first quarter these books are being used, that that is kind of what's going to happen. So I really appreciate your time and your patience as you're looking through the textbook. If you have a question, something doesn't quite make sense, you're working through steps on an activity and it looks like a little something jumped somewhere, please let me know so I can fix it and make it better and also help you, know, you find out what else you need to know to help um, finish the work that you're trying to do. In addition, I'll be putting together a variety of videos to supplement the textbook. That way, when you go into a chapter with an activity, I'll have a video where I show you a few steps of the activity and you can get visual cues and see how things look on the screen. And that would be why I don't have uh, tons and tons of screenshots in the book. 
So those are coming within the next couple of days. You'll start seeing those populate the existing sections. And then as each module opens, it will also have additional videos as well as the lessons and the lectures in Canvas that come um, to work with the books. So open educational resources, in case you're wondering what that means. Some of you may have heard of this, and some of you may not. In the educational market, one of the things that a lot of faculty have tried to do is figure out how do we share our information and how do we create course materials and even textbooks that are low cost or free for students, that are current, that could be updated regularly, and that don't cost you know, 50 or $100 like the major publishers. I mean, we respect the publishers, but the fact is you know, many of us who are your faculty have been students one or more times, and we know how expensive textbooks can be. Get a big textbook, it's great, it's glossy, it helps you through the course. What do you do with it? Can you sell it back? And that's just not a good place for students to have to be in. So one reason why I did the um, Open Educational Resource New Textbooks was to provide you with the free materials so that you can get things on day one of a course and be able to have more responsive uh, uh, action on the textbooks if there's actually a problem with them instead of having to wait until a new edition two years down the line, like with a conventional textbook. But as I've said, this is the first, first quarter I'm using these. They are going to have little, little, little fixes that need to be done. So I appreciate your patience on that. Also, for any of the activities and any assignments I create that need student data files, like starter Word files, Excel files, PowerPoint files, or other files, are going into a student data files zip file. Now, right now, at the beginning of the quarter, the zip files for each of the two courses contain the book exercise files. It will expand to have the various assignment files as well, but since those are being touched up and finalized, the zip files are not complete. So what you'll want to do is in the next week or week and a half, re-download the student data files if you've already downloaded a copy, re-download it, and it will have a lot more files in it. So again, thank you for giving me some time to do that. Now, for the best contact for me will usually be through Canvas. In the courses, you'll have on your left-hand navigation an inbox, and that's where you can contact me. And it helps me make sure that it's tied your email to me with the class you're in, what you need, and allows me to answer you back in Canvas. In addition, I do have an uh, email address which is listed on our Canvas course homepages. So if for some reason Canvas isn't giving you what you need, or you feel that you need to attach several images, or you feel an email may also need to go, say, to registration, for uh, you know, dropping a course or changing the status of a course, you would use standard email because in Canvas, other departments can't receive an email. It can't be forwarded. But otherwise, for the most part, all of your work with me can be done in Canvas. And that's really great because then I can access your messages all through the quarter. They can chain along discussions. Like if you have a question and I answer it and you have another question in response, it's all chained together right in Canvas with your name and what class you're in. I have office hours every week on Zoom on Thursdays from 3 o'clock to 4.30 p.m. with the exception of the final week of the quarter because final weeks tend to be for finals and not for instruction. I may amend that this quarter because the BizTech 105 course doesn't have a final project or uh, test, so it's an instructional week as well. So I may end up having office hours in week 11 of the quarter as well will determine depending on how much students are visiting. But the Zoom uh, link and my room, which is lj.bothel, and the password of coffee, I think, is listed in the homepage of Canvas underneath the image um, of the campus. And then finally, just so you know, I tend, like a lot of people, to take Friday evenings off. 
So usually around four o'clock on Friday afternoon, I will shut down email to give myself a break until early afternoon on Saturday. And then on Saturday evening and all day Sunday, I will also take off. So I have a full weekend day away from grading. Now our grading in our classes will usually be, oops, what happened? There we go. Will usually be, um, the due dates are always 11.59 p.m. on Fridays. And I will grade after that. If I'm still up, I'll grade right away. Otherwise, I'll grade sometime on Saturday. And that's when you'll see points populating Canvas. And um, I don't have extensions, but if something real life crisis oriented happens with you, please make sure to send me an email because on a case by case basis, if something happens, you have to go out of the country for a couple of weeks with limited Internet or you're actually you know, facing a hospital stay or some other thing like that. Obviously, we then talk about what we could do to help you get what you need done. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I could think of here. I'll think of about five more things when I'm done with the video. But I think this kind of gives you a good coverage. The note about contacting me, I check emails two or three times a day at least, and I respond daily. If for some reason you send an email and you don't receive a response for a day, barring it being sent on Sunday and I'm off that day, you know, let me know again. Just make sure that the email goes through. But I've been a student several times. I will have a new video um, introducing myself in more detail. But I've been to community college three different times. I've been to the University of Washington for a bachelor's and I did a fully online master's degree. So being in contact with your instructors and being able to get a response from them fairly quickly is, is important. I know that. I don't want to keep you waiting. So that's what I have now. I hope that this gives you enough of a welcome and an understanding of kind of where we're at right now. Um, as I said, you'll see things expanding, you'll see more files, you'll see videos, and I hope to make this a really um, a fun and an interesting and a stress-free quarter for you. The classes I teach are always learning-oriented classes, meaning you get to learn things, you get to demonstrate them, you get to try them out. It's not meant to be uh, a, a difficult or, uh, you know, no bell curves, no tricks, nothing like that. Just straightforward, sharing information with you, getting feedback from you, trying to make things better, but mostly passing information that I've acquired in the workplace and through several years of teaching from with other students uh, and, and just all the changes that are going on in our world with Excel and with uh, computer technology, digital technology, internet uh, related issues. All of that's changing all the time and I want to be current and give you the very best that I can. So thank you so much for joining these classes. I am really looking forward to working with you. Signing off.